Hello Reformers and welcome back to Warsword Conquest and Percy is here once again and we are now ready to do a little uh, a little building shall we say. We're going to head into the Guildmaster here and buy some land because I've waited here for a couple of days just trying to get the option that uh, you know improves your relation with the particular town by buying everyone in the tavern an ale. And, uh, yes, I'm not entirely sure if High Elves like Ale, but, uh, well, they're getting it no matter whether they want it or not. Anyway, a Weavery and Dye Works to make Velvet. It's only 976 now. Oh, my. Okay, I might need to do something a little bit different then by the looks of things. So, what about an Oil Press? Oil Press might be better because that does give us about a thousand. Ooh, that's actually much better. What is that? That's a, a, a what is that? That's a, a tannery. Oh, interesting. I was actually thinking that a Weaver and Eye Works would be the thing for quite a while, but I think Warsword Conquest in, in integrates a kind of, shall we say, decrease of, uh, of of funds. You know, when you get more and more of, a, of the same enterprise, I think there is a, a small calculation that happens, and a percentage of your mm, wages, I guess you could say, you could call them, is, uh, you know, deducted from the total. Anyway, uh, I guess a uh, tannery is the way to go, so there you go. Only 6,500 for that, and uh, I'm a bit worried, actually, now. I actually thought that getting another 1,800 would be pretty good for our party budget, and you can see exactly what it is right now. Not too bad. It's, it's, it's okay, you know. We're not making a huge amount of money. We're making about a thousand every single week, which is great if you take into consideration the various loot that we are going to get from raiding and pillaging those villages. And, uh, I mean, I guess you can already see the small decrease here because, obviously, Lothurn is only giving us about 1350, whereas Tor Anlek is giving us 1500. So there is a small decrease from that alone. Anyway, I thought I had lost my boat, and, uh, yes, I, uh, <laughs> I obviously forgot that we came back from the Dark Elf territory. And uh, I think what we're going to do is we're going to make a brief stop over there if we cannot get any action in Beastman territory. Ooh, there is actually a village very close to the Great Horn. Gorspite has obviously been taken, so we are not going to have any safe zone whatsoever when we go over there. So we might have to be even more on our toes than we normally are. Or maybe I... Don't need to worry about that at all, because apparently the High Elves and the Beastmen have made peace, and they have shaken the hands and the hooves, and they have, yes, well, they have decided not to fight anymore. Oh well, okay, so that means that basically, if we take a look at our faction relations right here, and the High Elves, they are basically in a truce or at peace with basically everyone, with the exception of the Dark Elves. They are the only people that we will be able to raid villages from. Oh, there is... What is going on here? Can I just ask... How... In... Everything... Does a Chaos Zealot party... Capture some War Dancers? And some Shadow Lords? And all that sort of thing? Okay, I'm gonna be tackling these guys. And uh, we're going to try and kill them. This, I mean, obviously they're going to be extremely easy. There's only, what, 20-something of them. And they also have a Tusk Gore. Not entirely sure how they got that either. But never mind. I'm uh, I'm pretty, uh, pretty positive about this. And hopefully we'll be able to gain our wonderful, wonderful prisoners. And uh, they do have a couple of, uh, they do have a couple of, uh, well, these War Dancers are, I think, Wood Elves. I, uh... It's been a while since I've played Blood Bowl, and that's basically the the place that I know a little bit about Warhammer. Whoa! Anton. Anton did a number on that guy. And uh, if I had the amount of damage that he did to, uh, to that guy, then I would know exactly what number. Because, obviously, you know, damage, you know, and, and the numbers and so on. Ah, well, never mind. Okay, so yeah, these guys are really quite outnumbered and outdone, outgeared, and uh, possibly outskilled, but I thought they might be hiding some hidden power if they were able to capture such strong units, because I seem to remember that war dancers, at least from Blood Bowl, are actually pretty advanced units. And so, 
Maybe there are advanced units in this as well. Who knows? I've never actually taken a look at the Wood Elf Tree, at least the new one. And uh, we're going to take a look here and see if I can... Yes, there you go. I can actually recruit them. They seem to be a little bit different than they were in uh, Blood Bowl, but they do advance to Blade Singers, which I think are the top tier. And we have Shadow Lords here as well. Shadow Lords are their maximum level archer. And we also have Wild Riders here, which are just a little bit lower than Wild Hunters. And Wild Hunters are the top tier. I am. Wow, I am blown away by that. That's pretty crazy. They also have some High Elves here as well, so nothing too bad for us, that's for sure. I'm not going to take this Mercenary Guard, because you never know, maybe we'll come across a Dark Elf or something like that that will give us a good amount to, uh, to, to rescue or something like that. And I'm probably... Mm, you know what? Taking this shield is going to be pretty good, because even though it's a Chaos Shield... Look at the size of it. It's got a, it's got 100 size, it's got 14 resistance, and even though it's battered, it does still have a decent amount of HP. And so we'll, we'll be able to use this pretty nicely for any siege that we decide to do. Because apparently, according to one of you, I'm not sure whether this is, shall we say, uh, a, a thing, you know, because I, I was unaware of this, actually. But, you know, if you have a shield in a siege, the AI tends to focus you less. And I'm not entirely sure about that because I've, I mean, I've played the game quite a bit and you would expect the AI just to focus the player character. It doesn't really matter whether it has a shield or not, but maybe it does. And so I would like to, I would like to try and reduce the chances of me dying. So I will, I will test it out and we'll see if we get incoming arrows many, many times over. I know that many times when I've played, uh, I've played Barney, uh, you know, in various incarnations, and I've had a shield, and I've gone into a siege. It's always resulted in me receiving many, many arrows into it, and uh, yes. So hopefully it's not going to be the case this time around. But I, wh what I'm doing right now is I'm trying to look for a village. I'm a bit worried about this. It's very close by to the Dark Elf town, and that is not going to be good for us. But I am placing my ship very close by here so that if there is a problem I will be able to solve it quite easily by running very very fast over to my boat. That reminds me actually I really should I'm not entirely sure can dwarves wear halfling armor and equipment because if they can because obviously they're kind of the same stature it might make sense for us to uh, might maybe buy something from the halfling merchant even though it is halfling gear maybe it would work with our two dwarven companions and that would make a whole world of difference in regards to their survivability because obviously at the moment they are kind of weak because they really do not have the best protection at all and uh, it might make sense for us to get something like that anyway wow this village is I have no idea just absolutely filled with iron well what's actually what's actually going on with that okay well let's have a look I'm gonna replace a lot of the food that I have here cheap ale as well because it's running out I mean you can see that plainly and uh, we're going to gain a little bit of that, and I might sell all of it, I don't really know, but for the moment it's good to just swap out that stuff. We do have some iron here as well that I'd like to take, but I, I don't know, I think we've taken a, a good amount of stuff anyway, so I guess we can just head onward. Ah, oh, I could actually just transfer this ragged leather jerkin out and these boots, because they're not really going to give us that much. Yeah, I, I'll take the cheap ale back, why not? Okay, that seems pretty good to me. I'm actually really surprised that no one turned up here. We have 21 cattle as well. There's some Skaven Corsairs. We might actually just want to fight these Skaven Corsairs on the fields of battle. It's kind of weird to see these guys on land. So let's, uh, let's teach them that they should, uh, they should probably stay on their, on their boats because, well, otherwise they don't have the element of surprise and uh, they're, they're technically going to be moving very, very slowly as well. Unless they do have mounts. Who knows? Maybe they do have mounts. It doesn't look like it though. They are using some kind of poison mist, though. I do remember from my time playing as Slythe of Skaven Blight, which I actually had a huge amount of fun playing, so they might be, in the future, a certainty for some kind of Skaven character. I think it would be quite fun to play as one of those once again. And, ooh, I got shot in the face. Well, I think in the face, maybe in the chest, but it doesn't really matter either way. I should really tell my... 
could really tell my forces to charge. Oh well, never mind. Doesn't really matter because we did get a couple of kills. And, uh, well, we're going to be getting on our ship after this, and that will give me enough time to restore myself. Should have used my healing potion. Yeah, I keep forgetting that I have that. It's basically a super, I wouldn't say I win button, but it is going to help me quite a bit. Okay, so we got something pretty awesome on our hands here, and that is a fellow by none other than uh, Dreadlord Kaldor the Cruel. He sounds like a really, really dangerous individual. But uh, you don't really need to worry, because he only has 55 units. Oh yes, only 55. And uh, he wandered a little bit too close to where I was when I was getting on my ship. And I thought to myself, okay, he only has 55. He's probably going to be much slower than we are, even though we outnumber him. And, well... I took the opportunity to, you know, try and get after him. Now, bear in mind, I am pretty low in HP, so I'm actually going to just take a healing potion straight away. And then we're going to get into some nice tactical positions here. Because, of course, you know, usually when we're just facing random bandits or some random party of any kind on, uh, on the field here, usually when that happens, I'm just like, okay, you know... Just, just do whatever, you know, just do whatever to our to our troops. Percy's saying, oh, just do whatever, you know, it's all good, kind of thing. But against a vassal, we're going to need to pull out slightly more advanced tactics. And that means infantry in the front, archers in the back, you know, standard stuff. And uh, we might also want to take our cavalry, because we actually have a pretty significant amount now for our current army size. And we have about nine of them. And they're very, very heavy. They are very heavy cavalry indeed. So any potential maneuver that we decide to do is going to be quite devastating. So hopefully we'll be able to do that. And also what I do need to get a hold of, or should we say who I need to get a hold of, is the liege of the High Elves. Because even though we are getting, I would say, probably quite a decent sum for our mercenary work, and we are able to, of course you know, leave after every month if we so desire, it is making it quite a bit easier for us to get that, that mercenary wage, you know. But, uh, oh, whoa, okay. That was, that was kind of harsh. Anyway, point is, it might not make sense to become a vassal right now, but on the one hand, I would like to kind of advance. Wow, that was really powerful. Did you see that? 56 damage, that's pretty crazy. Now, I am going to definitely need to get some good armor, or should we say some better armor for Percy, because he is tending to die quite a bit, and, uh, well, I can't really do much about that until he levels up somewhat, because obviously, in many, many ways, Warsword Conquest in, in general, and uh, mods like, you know, Perizno and Pendor, and uh, all of the ones that kind of crank the difficulty up just that little bit, because of all the amazing units that you're going to be fighting. I mean, just, just think about this guy, for example. He's fighting a Shadow Walker. Shadow Walker is obviously top tier, but these Karoberg Great Swords, they are so heavily armored. They do a huge amount of damage with their Great Swords. They move pretty, you know, pretty swiftly. You know, they're not moving too fast, but they are moving pretty swiftly. And he was taken out eventually by a top tier High Elf Dragon Guard. But for that fellow to be able to stay alive that long with a two handed sword against elves, that is a testament. To how heavily armored he is and how wily he is as well, a bit sneaky, a bit sneaky being able to get, you know, get past our archers. And uh, yes, anyway, the point that I was trying to make was that, in general, sometimes it's just impossible. No matter, you know, no matter what you're wearing or you know what you're doing, it's just impossible to not get shot. For example, by that dwarf that took me out with 56 damage, with that wonderful musket shot. Got to, got to commend him on that. I mean, Percy is applauding in his grave. Oh, well, technically, he's not in a grave, obviously. He's back at camp, you know, just relaxing. Uh, well, not really relaxing. I, I, I would think he's kind of annoyed, actually, at me. But, oh, well, never mind. Okay. Oh, we actually have... Oh, I see. There are two, two enemy units still remaining. I guess I'm going to have to tell my units to just charge in. Thankfully, we do have a good amount of whatever it may be to save our units. I guess surgery is coming into play here, even though I'm kind of injured, so it shouldn't really be working, but I, I suppose it's okay. And now we get the opportunity to take a Dread Master and an Empire Pistolier. Now that is going to be extremely good for us to sell. Amusingly enough though, Dreadlord Coriflame 
has not yet had any kind of ransom offer whatsoever. It's uh, it's a bit weird. I would have expected him to gain one pretty quickly, but yes, as you can see, I was I was going to get off my, you know, going to get get off. I know I was going to get on my ship. And uh, I saw him and uh, laid in a pursuit course, so to speak. Anyway, let's take a look and see what we have to level up here. Whoa, we have a huge amount of Dragon Guards to level up. We've got some High Helms right here. My weekly cost is skyrocketing. This is really bad. Oh, well. I mean, what what can you do, really? I mean, if you have units to level up and you have the money to, to actually upgrade them, then why would you not? I mean, they're just going to become even better. As time goes on, I'm not going to level my companions just yet because I'm going to leave this area and uh, maybe at some point we will do that when we have a small moment. All right, so something else that I need to address before we move forward here while I'm selling. I'm going to do this while I'm selling because usually I just stop and just, you know, randomly talk and, and, and so on and so forth without actually doing things. And that's it's pretty bad. That's pretty bad of me. Anyway, well, what we're going to do going forward is I'm actually going to try and reduce my encumbrance level because uh, I do know that that has an effect on how amazing your spells can be and I wasn't entirely sure whether it did affect the efficiency of you being able to cast it. I knew that it affected your magic regeneration but someone did mention that it does affect your effectiveness as well so sometimes when you cast a spell it's not going to work and so on and so forth and uh, I guess I'll try that out. So I'm going to go into the armor merchant here and I am wearing some high elf armor already and as well as a wizard's hat. So am I going to need to reduce my protection even further to be able to cast regrowth for example at a much higher rate? That's the thing I have to be concerned with now so I'm unsure what I should do really. Should I lower my body armor and my leg armor and then raise my helm armor which might make sense because getting shot in the face right now is kind of painful so it might make sense for me to get something that is a little better in that regard we now have 15,000 gold thanks to that insane raid that we had just now maybe that would be an idea yeah yeah okay you know what i'm gonna get uh, I, you know what? Let's let, let's just get a high elven phoenix. Oh wow, that's is, is that a bit much? Is that a bit much for Percy? Does he look a little bit too fancy? Maybe he looks a little bit too fancy. Oh well, let's give him a fancy helm, and then he's gonna be. Oh no, and then he's gonna be wearing something like. Mm, we can't give him anything like this. This is too much. But we can give him a sturdy elven archer robe. That is, I mean, really. That, that just doesn't look very good on him, does it? It doesn't look very good. Ugh, okay, well, whatever, whatever. It's absolutely fine. Let's give him some White Lion Greaves to make up for it then. That's 5,000, I guess. I mean, I feel like the helm and the and the legs are pretty good, so if we do want to, at some point, we might replace the torso armor as well. But there you go, okay. I have looked, by the way, for some bullets. Every time I go to a high elf place, I look for some bullets, but they don't have any, obviously. I mean, why would they? Anyway, let's, uh, I, I guess what we could do now is, wow, really? That is pretty crazy. Our tannery is not yet up and running, so we are very close to basically having no money whatsoever because we're going to start losing it. We are going to start losing it over time, that's for sure. Anyway, let's continue onward, and uh, what I'd like to do is go to... The Great Horn, yes. Let's just go to the Great Horn and uh, let's have a look and see how much a Weavery and Dye Works is actually going to be here because maybe the, shall we say, the reduction in the amount of money you get from a Weavery and Dye Works is only going to be unique to a particular faction, perhaps. I doubt that that's the case, but we'll have a look. All right, so they're actually happy to sell to me, amusingly enough. I don't exactly know why that would be, considering we've defeated quite a few of their lords. Not personally, mind you, so maybe that's the reason. Anyway, no, there you go, there we go. So we are actually going to be getting 1,962 if we can get those 12,000 together. And that would be pretty awesome, in my opinion. I think that would be really nice. And a tannery is 918, so yeah, it's not that much. Anyway, I don't have that money, so I guess what we'll be doing is returning to Dark Elf territory and seeing maybe if I can loot something else. Most of their villages are uh, called some very scary things, so I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to be able to muster up the courage to go 
even deeper into their territory. Because right now, with the last two raids that we've done on their villages, we have been extremely lucky in basically not running into any vassal that is very powerful indeed. And uh, we've always had a pretty nice escape route. But as you can see here, yeah, most of the villages that are, ah, oh, I thought that was a village for a second. Spiteful might actually be the way to go. <laughs> Amusingly enough, yes, these these names, they, yes, they are they are very cool in my opinion. They they do suit the dark elves, don't they? They do suit the dark elves quite quite a bit. Anyway, we're going to go over to Spiteful. I think we did raid Wrath and Monoliths beforehand, and they were pretty close. Wrath was not that close, but uh, yeah, it was quite close actually to the coast. And we're going to continue that trend. We're going to continue being a bit smart about this. You know, not not extremely smart, not like mastermind smart, but enough to get us uh, get us what we need. And that is, of course, a full inventory of stuff for us to be able to sell. So let's have a look. Maybe there will be a vassal up here as well, which we might be able to do battle with. Being able to do battle with the vassal here and maybe taking the prisoner would be an extra source of income. So let's see if we're able to do it. I'm a bit worried about this, to be honest. Because, well, I've been pretty lucky so far, and if... A vassal out of nowhere comes to fight us, then we are going to be in trouble. No, no, it seems like we're fine. It seems like we're fine. Wow, I am actually really surprised. Okay, so oh, we have velvet. Okay, oh yes. It seems like we might have hit the jackpot. If the if this was exquisite velvet, I'm not entirely sure. Can you get exquisite velvet? I think maybe you can. Anyway, this is fine velvet, which is absolutely fine. Yes, fine furs, which are fine. And uh, fine butter, which is also fine. So that's great. Otherwise, uh, yes, I will be just taking as much stuff as I can get my hands on, which I have. And that's pretty good. Okay, so I'm actually going to take a look around here, because it seems like the Dark Elf territory is suspiciously easy to raid. And uh, I'm a bit... Uh a bit suspicious of that. I, uh, I'm not entirely sure why that would be, because... Oh, look! Look, there they are! There's a whole bunch of them. Oh, okay. Apparently, the Flayer of Men is uh, is leading a war party there, and uh, that signals me to make a hasty retreat. Anyway, that will be it for this episode. I'm going to go back to High Elf territory and sell our wonderful, wonderful loot, and uh, then we'll be able to purchase maybe Weaver and Die Works somewhere. And uh, I'm open to suggestions, actually. I'm open to suggestions where the next... Weavery and Dye Works should be. Where do you think? Because at the moment, I'm thinking maybe Nippon, because we actually have a really, really good relation with them at the moment. But that doesn't mean that the High Elves won't decide to declare war on them, or vice versa, in the near future. So, who knows? But uh, either, otherwise, let me know in the comments. I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.